guys, so today we are reading chapter 17 and chapter 17 is not everything worth keeping has to be useful. I open the door that says Elliot's Antiques, tucked between the two storefronts and climb the wide staircase. I love this place. The jumble of old glittery brooches in the glass case, the worn pots and the dishes and frayed baskets on the bookshelves. I can't help stopping at the display of old bottles. If I had lots of money, I'd buy that ruby one from my bedroom windowsill. With sunlight shining through, I bet that it's beautiful. Can I help you? Elliot stands up behind his desk. His desktop is buried with piles of papers and used books. Elliot is thin and old and always stooped like he got tired of having to duck his head so he doesn't have to always now. I'm looking for a guitar. I knew I couldn't afford a new one at the department store or the music store, and I didn't know if I could even afford one at, at of Elliot's store. But I had to find out. He steps away from his desk and overbox, um, overboxes to reach me in the aisle. I have a couple. He adjusts his glasses on his sharp nose. I follow him through the maze of old chairs and tables covered with tools to the instruments. There's a saxophone in an open case looking dull against the black velvet. An organ is pushed against the wall. And next to that are three snare drumsticks stacked on top of one another. Four guitars rest against the side of the drums. Elliot shows them to me. I can almost afford the cheapest acoustic one. It's scratch and dusty, which is good news for me. Most places, the price is the price, but sometimes Elliot will take an offer, especially if something he's, if it's something he's had for a long time and he'd like to get rid of it. I show him my money. That's all I have. All right, he says, and I own a guitar. Carrying it down the stairs, I worry that Jason will see me in the parking lot with the guitar, so I race to our car and quickly put it in the back seat. In the waiting room, I take out the words I made. Seagull, wharf, park, sailboat, pathway, together. I made these cards extra special. The picture is detailed with beautiful um, drawings. I want to remember the good parts of our walk, not the part with me on the ground, hiding from Christy, hoping that Jason wouldn't notice. When they arrive, Mrs. Morehouse looks to Jason's um, finger staffing at his communication book. Don't whatever me, young man. Jason whirls up beside me. Hi, Catherine. Time, one o'clock, my birthday party. Great, I'll be there. I reach toward an empty pocket in his communication book with Seagull, but Jason grabs my arm to stop me. Your brother can come. To your party? David would love to go, but it'll be harder for me if he does. I, I don't know if that's a good idea, Jason. He'll want to watch your TV and he'll need to know if your cellar doors are closed and okay with me. Jason looks like he means it, so I suggest. Maybe he could have at the end, come at the end and have a piece of cake. Jason nods. Your neighbor friend can come too. I'm sure biz Christy's busy with Ryan on Saturday, but thanks for inviting her. I show him my cards. Look, I made you words from the park. Awesome, he smiles. Mom bought new book for more words. I put seagull in the pocket. That's good because you're almost out of room in this one. In fact, by the time I'm done, together has to go on the final page of his communication book. It sits by itself, a picture of the bench with two people sitting on it. 
Where? Wheelchair. Jason pulls his brows together. I, I imagined you without it, like you're in a dream where you can run. Want wheelchair in picture. Uh, I just thought, take it out. Jason looks away, frowning. I remove the card. I just remembered your dream and I thought you might like that. Is everything all right? Mrs. Morehouse asks. I look over to see her staring at us. Jason, she asks, do you need something? He puts his hand over his wheelchair joystick and whirls through the waiting room and down the corridor. I don't think that Jennifer's ready for you, Mrs. Morehouse calls. She usually comes to get you. I feel everyone in the waiting room looking at me. I slide together under my leg to hide it. Catherine, mom asks, what happened? Ignoring mom, I pick up my sketchbook and turn to my rule collection, but I don't know what to write. And that's the end of the chapter.